Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor with another short screencast on Web124, JavaScript 2, our final project, which is to create a front-end shopping cart. In the previous screencast, we talked about how we're going to store our data, and that is as an array of objects. You'll have different products, but in my array of objects, I've got five different objects in my array, and I've got one, two, three, four, five different properties for each of those objects. An ID, a unique ID, a picture, an S name, short name, a description, and a price. You'll want to have at least the picture and the price per the project requirements, but then any other properties that you want to store with your objects is up to you. So the question, however, though, is how do we get this information from our array of objects onto the web page? So let's scroll down, and the first thing I did was assign a variable to where I wanted the array of objects to go. So if I look at my HTML, I've just got this empty div here that's ID'd outer wrapper. And in my JavaScript, I'm going to use that same variable name and assign it to that outer wrapper div. That's where I'm going to append all this content is to that outer wrapper div. The real value in this screencast is learning more about the for each method. I've got my products array, and I'm going to use the for each method, and it has one argument. And the one argument that goes inside these parentheses is a pretty hefty thing. It's a function. So you put a function inside the for each method, and that function then works on each item in the array. It does the same thing to each item in the array. Now I could have used a for loop to loop through the products array and gotten the same thing accomplished, but the for each method is by far superior because I don't have to set up a counter, I don't have to initialize it, I don't have to test whether we're at the end, and so by using the for each method, I never can create an endless loop, which can happen with the for loop. So the for each method is a powerful method that does the same thing to each item in the array. I've got five items, I've got five objects in my array, and this function is going to run on each of those items. Another thing that I've done here is I'm using the new function arrow syntax instead of the old function syntax. If I use the old function syntax, it will look like this function, and then I'd have to pass in my variable name, and that would be the same thing. And now it's really clear that the only thing inside that for each method is one argument, which is a function. But I'm going to try to use the new arrow syntax because it's shorter. Now, the variable name that you use for your argument can be anything. It can be x. Oftentimes, however, though, it's a singular value of your array. Your array is a list of items. It's products, plural. So for each product, for each item in the products array, I want to do these 10 or 11 statements. Again, the variable name that you use for your function arguments can be anything. It's up to you. But logically, it kind of makes sense to call it a product because I want to do these statements for each item, each product in the products array. So let's look at the first three statements. What are the first three statements doing? Well, I'm declaring a new variable name, product description, and I'm assigning it to document.createElementP. So I'm creating a paragraph element here, floating around in the JavaScript environment. It's not added to the web page yet. I've just created the P. Now, a paragraph doesn't do a whole lot without text content. So product description, text content property, I'm assigning you to the product, the item in the array, his description property. So this first time this goes through the statement, I've created a paragraph and I've assigned its text content property, the description for the first product in the products array. It's three males and two females, and there we go, three males and two females. But there's one more step that you have to do to get that whole paragraph then on the page, and it's the append method. So I point to my outer wrapper where I want to append this new paragraph that has this text content, and that statement then goes ahead and adds that paragraph to the web page. 
The next statement is a combination of both the S name property, the short name property, and the price. It's a little bit more involved, but it starts out the same way. For product name, I'm creating another paragraph. And then I've got two ways to do the text content when you are putting pieces of text together. You can use the old method, which I'm showing here on the second line, by concatenating text with the plus sign. So I'm taking that item's S name, his short name, which is, for the first one, a litter of kittens. And I'm concatenating that to a colon, a space, and a dollar sign. And then I'm concatenating that to the product price. And the first product price is 10 bucks. Okay. So I can do that old way statement, or I can do the new way statement. The newer syntax is with these back ticks. It's called template literals. And whenever you pull in a piece of information, you put that piece of information in curly braces preceded by a dollar sign. But any text that you're concatenating, you don't have to use a plus sign. You just write your text. And so the colon space dollar sign becomes this little piece of that template literal. This dollar sign is actually introducing another piece of variable, the product price. So that was kind of an interesting statement. But anytime you create a paragraph, you generally do want to modify its text content property so that the paragraph actually has something inside of it to display on the web page, and then you want to append it. And I'm appending that to the outer wrapper as well. So when you just use the append method, it just goes on the bottom. It goes through the products array for each product and puts in the first paragraph, puts in the second paragraph. And now let's look at this image. The product image appending that is the most interesting of all because I'm creating a different element. I'm creating an IMG. And then instead of modifying its text content property, I'm going to modify its SRC, its source attribute, its ALT, its alt attribute, and then I'm going to append that. And if I right click and I inspect this web page, I'm going to see all of that on the web page as well. Here is my div outer wrapper. Here's the first paragraph I've appended. Here's the second paragraph I've appended. Here's my image that I've appended. And it's got the SRC HTML attribute there, the ALT attribute. So I'm always going to want different properties depending upon the HTML element that I'm to append. A paragraph or any textual element is going to need a text content property. But an IMG doesn't have text content property, right? There's no text inside the IMG, but it does demand an SRC attribute. And the picture property of each item in my array contains the path to the file for the SRC HTML attribute. And of course, every time that we insert an image, we also want to give it alternate text for screen readers, accessibility, and validation. Creating the IMG element then required both of these statements before I went ahead and appended it. So basically, these statements go through each product, go through each item in my products array, appending the first paragraph, appending the second paragraph, and appending the image. And that's how we can dynamically create this HTML page based on an array of objects that's going to change based on how a user has searched for information on our website. Thank you.